Well, welcome back to the Salina Speedway and another uh, great night of racing here at uh, Salina Speedway with the IMCAs, the Hobbies, of course, the Super Stocks, the Minis, and the B-Mods. And this being our 10th week of racing, but actually only our seventh time out here because of three rainouts. Mother Nature wasn't too good to us last week as uh, we had to uh, cancel out late in the afternoon. A lot of guys really ready to race, and, of course, we were ready to be here as well. But uh, along with that last week, a gentleman standing right beside of me that has been out here to the uh, Salina Speedway for a heck of a lot of years. And uh, he had a birthday last week, and they celebrated that uh, downtown in Salina. And none other than Mr. Sammy Brittendall. He drives the number 48 IMCA Modified. And Sammy, uh, how was your birthday? Well, it's pretty good, I, I, what I remember of it. <laughs> Don't remember too much. I huh? had a good time with all the race fans and uh, all the people that uh, race out here with you and uh, had a really enjoyable time. But let's, let's talk about you and your racing career The dates back, uh, doggone, what, uh, over 40 years, isn't it? Yeah, by 1955 started. Uh, and pretty much every year since then. A couple years I was in the Army, I didn't race much, but I raced every year since then. What was the first car that you raced out here at the Salina Speedway? Out here at Salina Speedway? Yeah. It was a super modified, they called them then. Uh, There's a little coupe. They still got it. Uh, they restored it and uh, crawl. They run it every once in a while at those antique races and stuff. He comes here once in a while with it. It's, uh, it's a good little car then. Did you ever uh, get in a sprint car? No, that, they super modifieds back then were about the same thing. Only they weren't quite as big and powerful as sprint cars. As you uh, think back about your racing career and all the things that uh, you've done during that time, what has been your favorite car to get in and race? Well, I I don't know. I, I look back and I, I really like the Super Modifieds. They were small, you know, like sprint cars. But I guess I had more success in, uh, in the uh, open wheel modifieds now my first car i bought from jerry phillips was a heck of a good car i had a lot of a lot of good luck in it but we run also we run uh, what they called uh, hobos you know it's just like street stock now had a couple pretty good cars in but i always uh, i liked open wheel cars i had a late model for a while too but man they got so expensive that that, that is an expensive car. A lot of those guys are doing that double up now, doing the IMCA modifieds or NCARA uh, modifieds and uh, doing the, the late models as well. But uh, any particular uh, race or any particular year that uh, is more memorable for you than any other? Well, I kind of like 91 because that's the year I won the IMCA championship out here. So I kind of like that year, but a lot of years uh, we had a lot of fun. Uh, but probably 91 was my best year, you know, because I won the championship. How, how do you feel about competing against the young guys now at, at your age? Oh, shoot, Ed, I don't feel no different now than I did then. You know, I really don't. Uh, I think, I think uh, maybe not, but I think I can do as good as they can. I think you can, too. I think age is just a matter of your, uh, of your imagination, and, uh, you know, you're only as young as you feel. And, of course, uh, you, you've proven it out here night in and night out on the Salina Speedway. Sammy, really appreciate you stopping by to talk to us. And, uh, folks, I'll tell you what, you're going to be able to, to watch Sammy out here at Salina Speedway every Saturday night in that white and orange number 48. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Sammy Brittendahl. We'll be back with more interviews after this. I'm back down here in the pits behind the grandstand. Again, Jerry Jones interviewing Access Television. And down here with me right now is the gentleman standing right beside me driving the 31 car in the Super Stocks, Mr. Kelly Dunn. And Kelly, I'll tell you what, even though that uh, you've only won one feature race thus far on the year, you've got three top fives to go along with that. And uh, right there at the number uh, four in the points uh, as of this week, this being our seventh week. But uh, enjoying your season here, 2002 at Salon Speedway? Oh, yeah, we're having a good time out here. And that's kind of what it's all about for us. And out of the cars running good and we're having fun so what else can you say <laughs> kelly uh, how long have you been driving out here at the speedway and how long have you been in the super stocks uh this is my third year in the super stock and i've been running out here for four years four years any uh anything that you've been that in that that long you what, what did you run your first year uh modified modified now did, uh, why did you switch back from modifies back to super stock oh i found a car and we built it up and i had i had a lot more fun in that car than i did in the modified so we just kind of stuck with it and now we're, we're running, we're, Troy Davis is running my other car now, so we got two cars out here in the super stock class. Okay. Do you ever see yourself uh, changing divisions again and then uh, maybe moving back up to the modifiers or going to something different? 
Oh, I don't know. I've been tossed around the idea of buying a late model sometime. I don't think I'd ever go back to modifieds, but right now we're having fun with super stocks. We're going to stay, stay here for a while. Have you had a chance to be in a, in a late model and uh, be around the track at all? No, I haven't. I have never got in one yet. A lot of, uh, of course, a lot more expense there with the late models, too, as well, in, in that situation, traveling around. What, what does it cost to put a late model together? I have no idea, but I'm sure it's pretty expensive. <laughs> Uh, what, what's been your uh, best season thus far out here at Salinas Speedway? Oh, I think best I've done is fourth in points. That was two years ago. I think last year, we broke down a lot last year and uh, ended up sixth or seventh. I can't remember for sure. So we're trying to do a little better this year. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Kelly Dunn right now setting number four in the points in the Super Stocks. He drives the number 31. He's got a feature win. I'll tell you what, you want to watch him every Saturday night out here at Salinas Speedway. Driving a number 31 car in the Super Stocks, Mr. Kelly Dunn. Back down here in the pits again to talk some more of our drivers here at the Salina Speedway. And we're joined now by the gentleman that stands right beside me, drives the uh, black and orange, a uh, number 91, Mr. Dean Brungard, who originally from the Salina area, but now lives in McPherson. But uh, Dean, how long have you been driving out here at Salina? Uh, this is my fourth season. Four season in the super, in the uh, modified? I actually started modifieds and spent a couple years getting beat up pretty bad. And I'm just now starting to get to where I can run with the boys. <laughs> so getting beat up pretty bad. You mean uh, just getting bumped around out there on the track or uh, just pretty uh, rough division to, to race in? It's not exactly a beginner division, and I got talked into it, and they took advantage of me. It took a while to learn how to make the cars work, too. That was the key thing. Once I, I actually bought a different car after the second year, and that was the big difference. It made a world difference having a straight car that was set up right, and it worked good right off the trailer that year. So big difference. Big difference. Any other tracks that you you drive besides Salina? I run Hutch Raceway Park on Friday nights. Other than that, it's them two pretty much. Do you like do you like that one down there as well? I like it just as well. It's fast and a little, little bigger around and faster, but it gets more one line down there. But it's fun. It's all fun. You know, we had a lot of uh, modified so far on this year. Really a great car count uh, on the season thus far, 2002. What's your thoughts about that? Why so many guys are coming out here? I really don't know. I think it's just it's close for a lot of the guys that live in this area. It's hard to drive two hours to a track when you got one half hour away. It's just economical. It makes sense, you know. Absolutely. Enjoy the modifieds as much as you would stay there and, and race in that for a great length of time, or would you change some of their division? I, the only reason I would go to anything else is if I got a big money man behind me, but I don't see that happening. I enjoy this, so I'll probably stay in this for as long as I can, as long as I can afford to race. Who would you like to thank uh, about your race car? I've got to thank Troy Winters. He's been my main help for since I started. I bought the, my first car from them, and he's given me a lot of the technical help that I needed because I'm not a mechanic. A lot of this I didn't know nothing about, and he's the one that really stepped in and helped me out. Uh, my mom, she's been out here every night watching. And she's my biggest fan. Uh, other than that, just a few friends that help out once in a while. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Dean Brungard, he drives the black and orange number 91. Check for him. He's right now sitting down at around number 20, uh, 21, 22 uh, in the points, but he's going to try to make his uh, trek up uh, the ladder there to try to get in that top 10 before the end of the season. Dean Brungard in the 91. All right, we're back down here again. Jerry Jones with Access Television and interviewing uh, more of our drivers on this 2002 racing season here at the Salina Speedway. And standing right next to me is a gentleman who's been extremely successful thus far on the year here at Salina Speedway is Mr. Gary Wayne Fuller. He drives the number six in the mini stocks. And uh, Gary Wayne, uh, thus far on the year, as we take a look at what you've been able to accomplish right now, five feature wins and, of course, five uh, top five finishes that go right along with that. Talk about your success uh, so far on this year. Uh, it's been pretty good. We got a good program going this year, and got a good lot of people behind us this year. Southwinds Roofing, and they're our major sponsor. They helped out quite a bit. How do you feel like uh, the track has been this year? I know last year that you were an official here and didn't do a lot of racing. You did some down at Hudson, some but didn't race here at the Salinas Speedway. But how do you feel about the track condition this year? It looks been pretty good, hasn't it? Yeah, it's been. I like it dry slick, so it's been my way. Well, I guess the, the hot, dry weather really makes it that way. And, of course, you hope they got enough water that it comes up uh, throughout the evening. But uh, really, your car has been running extremely well. Really haven't had any problems with it all, have you? We've been lucky. You never know, though. <laughs> 
you know, luck is all all a part of it. But uh, you know, uh, right now you're sitting there in that uh, top five in points. That uh, one night uh, you did get uh, uh, black flagged off the track, and of course that took some points away from you. But with those five feature wins, you got back up there pretty, pretty quick. Yeah, I had to kind of work hard. I kind of got kind of dumb the first night, but I slowed down. Well, I'll tell you what, the way you get out front now, it's pretty hard to, to, to catch you. We've seen several times you and your daughter, Stacy, who just graduated this last year at uh, Tescott High School, and uh, she's doing pretty well as well. She's up there in the top seven, I think, in points right now. Last year, she was the co-champion, but uh, what's what's uh, the secret to her success, maybe helping her out throughout the year? Uh, she's got a good car, got one of my old cars, and it's proven, so it's a pretty good piece. You think she's getting better as a, as a driver now the, this year after this what I think her third year actually in the mini stock? Yeah, she's she's coming along for a woman. It's it's pretty tough on a woman. Yeah, it is. That uh, we do have a couple of gals out here besides uh, Stacy. There's Jeannie Rohde that also drives as well. But uh, Stacy really been very successful. Of course, last year very good being up there as the uh, Co Points champion in the mini stock. Gary, uh, glad to have you stop by and talk to us. And uh, good luck tonight. Good luck the rest of the season. Thank you very much. All right, Gary Wayne Fuller driving a number six in a mini stock, so we'll be back in just a moment. Well, we continue on with more interviews down here in the pit area on Access Television. And uh, back down here again, as we finish with Gary Wayne, we're down here with his daughter, Stacy Fuller, who was the runner-up in uh, points champions last year here at the Speedway on 2001. And Stacy, uh, so far this year, uh, haven't been able to get up there in that top five like you'd uh, like to, but you are right there at number eight in the points right now. Talk about uh, this year and how tough it is. Uh, it's a little bit harder race with my dad. I think I'm a little bit more competitive than I was last year. It's still hard to race with them. <laughs> Do you feel a little more pressure with him out there on the track? Yeah, I, I don't know. I think I need to finish farther up, and I work harder. I don't get as far up as I need to. You know, I, I noticed a couple of times that uh, you've been able to uh, race uh, w right there with him and uh, either being ahead of him or behind him, and I know that eventually he's a past you, but uh, talk about what, what kind of things that you think you're going to have to do to try to uh, get up there in that top five. My dad said just follow him, and he'll lead me up there. Do you know, last year you had some handling problems at different times on the track. You know, we talked about that at the beginning of the year, talking about over here in turn two and over on turn four. Some of that's dissipated on this year, though. Don't you feel like the car's handling better this year? Yeah, I've had a lot more experience now, and it's a lot easier. This being your third year, uh, feeling awfully good about it? Yeah, I'm more comfortable now. Well, I probably feel good. You're, you're also graduated. You're out of high school now, do you, right? Yeah. Where are you going to college? Um, I'm going to the Hare Academy here in Salina. Okay, very good. Enjoying your season 2002 thus far? Yep. <laughs> All right, we'll look forward to that. Folks, we're talking with Stacy Fuller. She's right now number eight in the points and driving the black number one in a mini stock. Look for her every Saturday night here at the Salina Speedway. All right, folks, let's get ready to race. Who's ready to watch some mini stock action this evening? Coach will lead us off here and let us know our lineup. Heading out, first heat mini stock race in Salina Speedway style. We're getting ready right now. We're going to tell you what that uh, first heat's going to look like. And uh, we've got a number here. We'll have uh, eight laps uh, per heat race here, two of them in a mini stock, 16 cars uh, here tonight uh, for the minis. And let's uh, set up a grid for you this way before they get out there on the track. On the pole in the 369 will be John McWhorter. On the outside of the 50 will be Steve Oler Jr. On row two in the, the B98 will be Robert Berg. On the outside of the 23, Daryl Brunsell. On row three in the 26R, it'll be Jeannie Rohde. On the outside of the L99, Les Wright. On uh, row four in the number one on the inside, it'll be Stacy Fuller. On uh, the outside uh, in the, the 51 will be Randy Porter. Again, 16 cars here tonight uh, for the mini stocks. We'll have a total car count for you uh, a little bit later on. But uh, as you uh, take a look at uh, the people in this uh, top heat race here, again, Stacy Fuller, one of those top 10 uh, that are in there, along with Steve Ward, who's right there at the number six position uh, in uh, the points thus far on the year.
You had a pretty good uh, group of hobby stocks to get tonight, 19 cars here, so a couple of heat races there. Those are going to be pretty uh, well uh, packed with cars in each one of those. And uh, then, of course, we'll uh, be modified, six cars in that one. 21 super stocks uh, here tonight, and uh, still a good car count, but uh, one of our lowest of the year on uh, the modifies. 29 modifieds are here this evening. Only we've had around 34 to 37 of those uh, throughout uh, the season thus far to this date, but uh, still a pretty doggone good car count. Uh, uh, here this evening, even some of those guys that uh, are involved in racing uh, the late models as well, they're doing that this evening along with uh, their, their mod show at uh, Mayetta over at Thunder Hill. But here we take off with our opening A race, and again, as you see out there in the uh, 369, John McWhorter, Steve Oda, Jr. in the 50, and Robert Bergen at B98, Daryl Bunsell in the 23, Les Wright in the L99, the 26R of Judy Rohde, and Stacey Fuller in the number one. And Randy Porter in that 51. Uh, we'll get them lined up here and get them side by side. Mr. Ed Chenoweth uh, down here as uh, you're uh, flying. we got the yellow still on. We still have a problem with the 26R. Jimmy Rohde, uh, well, now got it finally running. I guess going to be able to get uh, going without any assistance. And uh, we'll do that. We'll have to catch up. So we'll have to have another lap here to uh, get things uh, lined up and get them stacked and racked in the way that... Uh, Mr. Chenoweth wants to see them and get ready for tonight's uh, opening race here. So actually, as we take a look uh, through the uh, lineup tonight, we're going to have 11 E races for you and the likelihood of having a uh, B feature or so. And then, of course, uh, our five A mains on the evening. You know, if you've got uh, birthdays that, uh, or any anniversaries or anything that you'd like to have us uh, give up here in uh, the announcer's booth, uh, please uh, go down to the souvenir shack and fill out uh, the form down there, and they'll bring it up to us later and tell us all about uh, your birthdays or your anniversaries or any kind of special event you'd like to have us announce and talk about. All right, here they come, side by side, nose to tail, out of turn number four, looking for a start this time as the green will fall, and we're underway here at the Solana Speedway. As you watch Steve Little Jr. in the 50, hit it at turn number one there with a the leader right behind it, Gerald Russell in the 23. The rest of the pack behind is see John McCorder along with Les Wright. Here comes Randy Porter at 51 on the inside. There's uh, two abreast uh, together as they go through uh, turn three and four. Here comes your leader, Gerald Brunsell is overtaking the 50. Now he has the lead with one rod down. And again, this is a scheduled eight lap heat race as you watch Gerald Brunsell, Steve Little Jr. work their way through one and two. The B98 over here, Robert Berg, he had his problems over on turn four, but uh, the yellow is out, so obviously we're going to have to have a restart. That happened right there, right at the last moment before the end of uh, lap number one. So one lap is down, seven to go here on our opening heat race. In eight... Uh, cars in each one of our heat races tonight as uh, Daryl Brunsell brings him around nice and slow around turn number three. Boy, the track looks good here tonight, and uh, here they come out of turn number four. Green's going to drop again for the minis. down through the main chute here and then the one and two is Daryl Brunsell and Steve Hollard and Les Wright through there John McWhorter Stacey Fuller will try to make her maneuver out of turn number two but uh, did not make that uh, move to down inside Randy Porter up high goes around Stacey Fuller he likes it up there on the cushion maybe even a little higher in some cases but now comes back down in the road he'll try to make his maneuver on the middle here tonight in the main chute and getting around John McWhorter and he gets it turn number one and two Still has plenty of time on this one, but he'll have to make it happen in a hurry. Stacy Fuller also trying to make her move down the back chute, but does not get it done yet to get around John McWhorter, but your leader is coming around out of turn number four. Here's Daryl Brunsell in that 23. And you know what? To this point, Daryl Brunsell does not have a knee race win, so he would certainly like to make that happen here tonight. And at this point, it looks like that he's going to be able to uh, maybe make that... Uh, uh, come true for him as he's really extended his lead now over Steve Miller Jr. in that 50 pickup and Randy Porter in the, the 51 he is in third Gerald Brunsell really has things rocking and rolling here out front Steve Miller Jr. there in the 50 here comes Les Wright but Randy Porter trying to hang on to it there's Jason Porter and Robert Bergen in the 98 well pretty well strung out here as you watch your leader Gerald Brunsell in the 23 
just keeps extending his lead and uh, practically a full length straightaway lead over your second place runner and having the number 50 pickup for Steve Olu Jr. Uh, the 51 stopped over on the back side, so that's Randy Porter. you got a problem over there. We'll bring the yellow out and get them all bunched up again together. But uh, Randy Porter with the 51, I don't know is this exactly what happened over there. If he just needs an extra little shove to get it going or something else happened mechanically, he won't be able to continue. Coach, as I watched him head down the back stretch on that last lap and uh, into turn three, it looked like the car might have been jumping out of gear on him. Something must definitely make it die as he get it rolling pretty good and... Uh, that's a sad thing to see, because like I said, he was starting to make it look pretty easy. By the way, folks, I'm sure it's not that great a damage, and that car is for sale. It's fast. It's always been fast. It's been fast with Mr. Porter behind the wheel. It was fast way back in the day with Danny Morrison behind the wheel. Great car, great buy. Stop on down and see him in his pits. Randy Porter, number 51, that car is for sale. Well, it'll be a great opportunity for somebody that wanted to get uh, into to the sport of racing. It'll be a great car to, to jump into and to be uh, right out here on the track because it's, it's track ready. And a uh, great, uh, great chance to be successful right away. But apparently right now, something uh, wrong with the car, and he's going to be uh, heading uh, into the pits. And again, he'll have to have a little extra help. I think uh, he thought he was going to be able to get a push hard enough to get a little over there to the hill and down in the pits. Not so going a little extra shove to get him back down into the pits behind the grandstand. Of course, everybody bunched up here to get this thing going. We've got the cone back out there for the restart. Coaches, we're waiting for the restart. I see down here in front of us Mr. Windshield himself, Bart Tannehill. Glad to see him and Kenny Cross back with us this evening. All right, all tightened up here, nose to tail, is Daryl Brunsell, and I do mean nose to tail. It's a real tailgating party. Here they come, out of four, we've got green. Brunsell doesn't waste any time. I've got a little space between he and uh, Steve Holder Jr. and Les Wright, and Stacey Fuller will now try to make uh, her maneuver down the back to get around Les Wright to get up there in that top three. And she does uh, stay down inside there. But stays at a number four spot as Darrell Brunsell comes around. We've got two laps to go for Darrell Brunsell and the rest of the field. Here comes Stacy Fuller. She pulls up alongside by side. Door to door there with Les Wright. And down inside, I think she's going to make the maneuver. We'll get around and make the pass. She does. And now to turn number two down to back. Shoot. She's in the number three spot. She'll have quite a little distance to go there to make up to get around Steve Hollard uh, Jr. to get in that uh, top two positions. But Darrell Brunsell with one more trip to go around the 3 8 oval here at the Salinas Speedway. And he filled his lead a little bit more to get his first he race win of the year. You know, he hasn't had one. He's had five top five finishes, and he's had one feature win thus far in the year. This will be his first he race win as he brings it out of three. And now out of four, the Dell 23 car and Barrel Brunsell will have the he race win on the night. Steve Olin Jr. is your runner-up, then Stacy Fuller in third. Right in fourth, and the rest of the field as they make it on through John McWhorter and Robert Bird. Well, that's the way it ended up there, folks. Your third place finisher, Stacy Fuller, in the black and blue number one. Your runner up in the 50 pickup is Steve Oler Jr. Put your hands together for the gentleman behind the wheel of the 23, Mr. Darrell Bunsell. He race number two, checking out there on the track right now. And we'll tell you about that. Chris Humphreys in the C4 will sit on the pole. On the outside of the 007 is Frank Hedberg. Out of McPherson. On row two in the 30, Larry Garyon Jr. On the outside of the 7-2 is Steve Wente. On row three in the 7-J is Jeremy Hedberg. On the outside of the 7 is Jerry Hedberg. He's your points leader as of this week. On roll four, the six of Gary Wayne Fuller, who has just run away with a with five feature wins thus far in the year. In the 86, it's Matt Miller. Well, it didn't take him long to get side by side, nose to tail. Here they come out of three and four. Mr. Chittaman looking over. Maybe they'll start this time out of turn number four. Coming on down there, Chris Humphreys. Yes, Green's going to fall for the minis here in he reached number two. And right away, the double seven is Frank Hedberg. He had a really 
nice jump off the front row and into the lead in one and two and out of there down the back shoots extending the lead just a little bit more as Chris Humphreys there's Larry Garyon in the 30 Jeremy Edberg and Gary Wayne Fuller who was at the back of the pack made a real quick jump up there to get to that top five and now will try to maneuver his way through this pack to get up there and try to make a battle quick like Edberg much together going into one and two this time. All the people are trying to battle for that two, three, four, and five position. As you see, Chris Humphries has dropped back all the way back to five. As now you see Gary Wayne Fuller in fourth and trying to work on Jeremy Hedberg plus Larry Gary on. Well, Jerry Hedberg going up high there in the number seven, got up there in the loose stuff. A little dusty creative, but come right back now. Now we'll work on Jeremy Edberg. Here he comes down inside there. You know something, uh, the number six there of Gary Wayne Fuller, he's got three. He raced uh, wins to his credit thus far on the year, and we'll try to make it four here, but he's going to have a ways to go to catch up. Here's Frank Edberg. Here he comes on the outside in a rim rider here. On uh, this, our second, uh, he raced the night right around in the middle on the groove is Gary Wayne Fuller, and now that runner-up spot will try to make chase of the 007. Of Frank Edberg. Frank Edberg out of McPherson, Jeremy and Jerry out of Lindsburg, Kansas. But Frank Edberg, here he goes down the main street. But right there on his tail now is the number six of Gary Wayne Fuller. And I really had a nice visit with him earlier tonight as well down there in the pits on Access Television talking about his success. And he really pays a lot of tribute to the people that helped set him up set up the car this year for him as it's really handled extremely well on this track for 2002. Gary Wayne Fuller trying to find his way around the 007 of Frank Edberg. He'll go up high as he looks to stay right there in the groove, but now does get around and Gary Wayne Fuller has the lead from all the way in the back of the pack. That shows you what kind of driving ability he has in this mini stock series in that black and yellow and orange number six. And uh, you know, he said he felt really comfortable this year. Feels really Really good about how this car is handling and about his chances on this year. All the way to the back to the front, Gary Wayne Fuller and Frank Edberg trying to hang on to the runner up spot. Jeremy Edberg in third, then Larry Gary on in the 30 is your number four guy, and uh, the number seven is Jerry Edberg, rounds out that top five. And here will one more trip to go. Gary Wayne Fuller trying to pick up another win. As you see Gary Wayne Fuller with just a half a lap to go. And Frank Hedberg staving off of the attempt by uh, Jeremy Hedberg to get around him. So the Hedbergs look to finish uh, two and three here is the winner is Gary Wayne Fuller. Frank Hedberg will get the winner up by Jeremy in third, third Gary on in fourth, and then the number seven of Jerry Hedberg there in the number five position. So that's the way it ended up as your 86 goes across the finish line. Again in third, the 7J of Jeremy Hedberg, your runner up on the 007, Frank Hedberg. Ladies and gentlemen, his fourth heat race win of the year, Mr. Gary Wayne Fuller. Coach, I couldn't help but watching that last race, seeing uh, Chris Humphreys out there trying hard as he could. Another second generation here at Salina Speedway. Tell you what, he's also a good friend of Steve Streitz. Does believe, I do believe he works for him. Uh, here in just a little bit is uh, uh, Sean Balazor in the Bennett Auto Flex uh, pace car uh, leads them around. And uh, we'll try to set that up for you. Again, in that uh, B98, Robert uh, Bird there, less uh, right on the L99 on the outside. On row two in the 50 is Steve Oldert uh, Jr. And on the, in the six is Gary Wayne Fuller. On the outside, on row three in the 30 is Larry Garyon. On the outside of him is uh, Stacy Filler in the number one. Folks, get on your feet as they come around here and give them a great big Salina Speedway wave as your mini stocks at their a main tonight. 12 laps, yeah, let's show them how much you like them. All right, let's uh, finish out the lineup here uh, for the minis. The 007, Frank Hedberg on the outside. The 23 is Daryl Brunsell, the 7J of Jeremy Hedberg. And on the outside of him, Jerry Hedberg in the 7. The 369 of John McWhorter. The C4 of Chris Humphreys, the 86 of Matt Miller. The 7T 
of uh, Troy Wentley, the 51 of Randy Porter, the 26R of Gene Rohde. 12 laps coming up here for the minis as they're nose to tail, side by side, coming around out of turn number three. And again, it is Robert Berg, and let's ride up front there. Here they come. And the main shoot, they're off for 12 weapons on the minis they made. quick fashion. It was Gary Wayne Fuller that really got a slingshot lead down the main stretch of the turn one and doing it on the back shoot he goes. And I tell you what, looking to tack on win number six when he's out front like that unless something goes wrong with the car, you're probably not going to see much of him except for his tail end. Gary Wayne Fuller down the main shoot as your leader. Here comes the rest of the field. Stacy Fuller in the number one. You know, I had a chance to talk with her tonight. Earlier on the pits and talked about what she thought she needed to do to move up and her dad says, just follow me and get right on my tail and I'm going to lead you to the promised land. It looks like that's what she's doing tonight. And Stacey Fuller in that runner-up position. Steve Ollert in the number three spot right now, but Gary Wayne Fuller's extended his lead. Here comes Stacey. Oh, she lost her position. Got a little high there. Got a turn number four. Steve Ollert along with Frank Hedberg in the number 07. Followed by the 7J of Jeremy Hedberg. Now Stacey getting right back in the mix. Daryl Brunsell in the 23. Frank Hedberg, something wrong with the car, and he's off the track. He's out of McPherson. He's on that back shoot over there on the back shoot pit side. And here comes your leader around, Gary Wayne Fuller in that number six. Steve Oder in the 50. Here comes the rest of the field behind that. Jeremy Hedberg, Daryl Brunson, Stacey Fuller, out that uh, top five. I tell you what, Stacey would like to stay up there and maybe finish out and get a top five finish tonight. We'll uh, see what happens so far on the year. She does have three top five finishes, but she does not have a win yet. Of course, her father has five of those and looking for another one tonight here and with Matt's the number on his car. The rest of the field going on to it. Chris Humphries, Larry Gary Owen, Matt Miller, along with Les Wright, and Randy Porter, the 51, and uh, that uh, B98 uh, they're uh, going on through. And she wants uh, Troy Wentley going through there now. Gary Wayne Fuller right up here on the back of the pack as he's going to make the pass here in just a moment or two. And this is a special 12 lap. Fuller rides it high, getting around uh, Corey Wentley over there on turn number three, and he comes out of turn number four. I tell you what, he knows how to wheel and deal the Pinto, the black and yellow. Corey's oh, number six Pinto around this racetrack. He's been around here many, many, many times, and of course he raced last year down in Hutchinson as well, but now this year here at the Salina Speedway, doing a great job. He's back on the top five in points, and with a big, big lead right now over Steve Oler Jr. in the 50, and then Daryl Brunsell, Jeremy Hedberg, and Stacy Fuller right there behind a number five position. I'll tell you what, that's uh, almost deja vu of what it was a year ago, as Jeremy Hedberg and Stacy Fuller were your co-champions from last year in 2001, and now they are just uh, one right behind the other. Jeremy Hedberg and Stacy Fuller back here, four and five positions, trying to battle up there with the 23, a Daryl Brunsell in the 50 of Steve Oler Jr. Larry Gary on back here in the 30, trying to move up. He's in the number six position. Chris Humphreys in the C4, and then Matt Miller in the 86. But as they uh, rock on through now down to Main Street, I'll tell you what, Gary Wayne Fuller hasn't let any grass grow on the end speed at all, as he's got a full length straightaway lead for Daryl Brunsell and the rest of the field. Jeremy Hedberg, there's your top five. They moved up there around to uh, Troy Wente, and here goes your leader on by now. The laps continually fall away as this one will come to a close very, very quickly here, and unless uh, something will happen, it will create a stoppage. Now, Stacy Fuller has gotten around Steve Oler. She's moved into that number four position, and she's trying to make sure she finishes in that top five. She'd like nothing better to stay right there with Jeremy Hedberg and maybe get right up there. Now, we have two laps to go for Gary Wayne Fuller and the rest of the field. Big lead for Gary Wayne. He's looking for win number six. Darrell Brunson is running up for Jeremy Hedberg. Steve Oler trying to stave off the effort by Larry Garyon. They're trying to get in that top five position. Well, I tell you what, it'd be a big, nice move for Stacey Fuller. Man, Stacey Fuller trying to make her charge on Jeremy Hedberg. Good answer problem. One more lap to go now. A little smoke coming out of the car. The number one car is Stacey Fuller. Don't know what that's all about. I don't know if she's got engine problems or what she's got. Stacey Fuller trying to battle hard. 
she got a fire in the car. Stacy Fuller's got a fire underneath, and I don't think she knows it yet, but she's uh, trying to stay with it. The fire apparently went out. they staying right there. I don't know just exactly what took place, but she's still got a fire underneath that car. Stacy Fuller doesn't know it yet at this point, and uh, trying to stay right up there with Jeremy Hedberg. She comes through, and she's going to have to shut that car down and try to get out of it in a hurry, but Stacy Fuller with a fire under there does finish in fourth as that's the way it ended up. Stacy Fuller in your number four position in the third with the 7J of Jeremy Hedberg. In the runner-up spot was Daryl Brunsell in the 23. And ladies and gentlemen, with a win number six to match the number of his car, let's put them together for Mr. Gary Wayne Fuller. Well, we've got the, the modified uh, B main coming up here, the qualifier.
Jerry on the inside. I think Jerry on the inside. A little behind. Right yeah, it's not looking good. I like Beam said that we got seven cars all around the room inside. They got a better position. So we'll have to see if these driving skills and new wiring harness will propel them in the first place. Oh yeah, for your uh, info there, uh, person that lives over in another state now, uh, Chris just ran across the, beyond the building there, I talked to him earlier. can see Jeremy's on the inside, right behind Daryl and Jerry's up with them. So Daryl can propel himself up to the first place.
Daryl got second place. Huh? We'll be moving up in points. Yogurt could help you lose more weight than just cutting calories alone. She wore and it's 